the way that um, I would like to approach this with you today is to get the, just the broad context of immigration in the history of United States law, uh, bring it up to the present time, and then um, see what the, the bishops of the United States are saying about this, what, what the, uh, the church context is, to see very briefly what our President Obama's uh, position is, and then, you know, we can open it up for questions and discussion. The uh, history of uh, immigration in the United States, uh, as you might guess, started really open. I mean, I'm thinking now going way back uh, before we were even a country. You know, we were just uh, a colony of England uh, with many independent colonies and cities, and people just came to this country as they wanted. It was, it was not regulated at all. And of course, um, you know, we welcomed people with open arms, you know, because we had this grand land that needed to be settled. So pretty much anybody who wanted to come here could. And of course, many people did either uh, just for uh, well, some, of course, because they wanted to escape uh, religious oppression or political oppression. Um, these are the people that today we would uh, describe them as seeking asylum. Uh, they're trying to escape uh, some sort of uh, oppression of, of one kind or another. Others came just because it seemed to be a place where they could advance uh, themselves and their own families. And so people came for a lot of different reasons. Uh, so this continued. Then uh, we, find we became our own country. The, you know, the for colonies became states. We began to add states. And in the early history of immigration law, all of immigration was regulated by the individual states. But by the time of the Civil War, as you know, this was one of the issues of the Civil War, it was not uh, just a matter of freeing slaves. We also had to work out this relationship between the individual states and the new nation as a federal government. So uh, after the Civil War, uh, there was a case that made its way before the Supreme Court of the United States. And in um, 1875, I believe it was, uh, the Supreme Court then decided that immigration should no longer be left to the regulation of the states, of the individual states, but that it was a federal issue and would be regulated by the whole country as one. Uh, this was then right around the time or just before the time that there was the first great wave of immigration into the United States, uh, which lasted from about, you know, these dates are, are rough, from about 1880 and right up until just before the First World War. So this great wave of immigration, and then of course it pretty much stopped during, uh, during wartime. Uh, and so then First World War ended in 1918, and uh, you will know this, uh, that at the end of the First World War, Europe was pretty much remapped. Uh, <coughs> The old empires no longer existed. The Austro-Hungarian Empire, which was, I mean, it was huge. And that was no longer there. And there were all these new nation states that were created after uh, the First World War. At that time then, um, just a couple of years after, in 1921, our government 
established um, its first really thorough uh, system of immigration and uh, the federal government uh, established the system that probably many of you will recognize as I did. It was the quota system. So <clears throat> our government <clears throat> looked at all of these new, now new countries in Europe and said, you know, okay, every year we can take so many from this country, so many from that country, so many from another country, and it was proportionate. And that was, it seemed a fair system and, uh, you know, to allow a lot of different nationalities into our country. And um, that was the system that lasted uh, really up until the 1960s. The only major thing that happened before that was in 1952, so after World War II now, 1952, our government took all of these immigration laws, federal laws, but they were, they were spread all over the place in our code of laws. So if anybody wanted to go, you know, to the United States code and say, well, you know, what does the immigration law say about this or that or whatever, they were spread all over the place and difficult to find, difficult to work with. So in 1952, it's not, well, betray my age, I was going to say it's not, not that long ago. Um, it was the first time that our government took all of these laws and said, okay, let's just put them all together in the same place in our code. So that happened um, and we had for the first time passed an Immigration and Nation Nationality Act getting all of these laws together, 1952. But the same, it was still <clears throat> the same quota system that was in place. And as I said, that lasted up until the 1960s. Then in 1965, this is now uh, President Johnson, uh, Congress passed and he signed uh, a new Immigration and Nationality Act, which what they were trying to do was to take our immigration laws and this quota system and open it up to a lot of other people in the world. The, the old system had focused pretty much on Western Europe and now um, the world had developed and grown. The economy of the world had grown and developed and we saw that there were people in other parts of the world, from um, the Asian countries, for example, um, who would be able to contribute to our society. And so the law was changed in 1965 uh, so that we could allow into our country these, the, the new skills that were needed for our economy and also to invite peoples from the former colonial countries. Um, after World War II, a lot of, uh, well, for example, the, the British Empire uh, began to break down. And so now these former colonies now were nation states on their own. And so we could welcome those people into our country at well, uh, as well. <clears throat> so this was 1965. But this was the beginning of a real change in our immigration, uh, the pattern of immigration to our country. In uh, the year 2006, um, you, probably you know this uh, program on national public radio called All Things Considered. Maybe you've heard it. At any rate, in 2006, they did a program and said that this law from 1965 marked a radical break with previous policy 
and led to profound demographic changes in America. Well, it did, and uh, of course the world was changing radically uh, in the late 60s, and by the 1970s, uh, historians of immigration uh, identify what they call the second great wave of immigration. The first one being before World War I, and now this second wave beginning in the 1970s, and really continuing right up to our own time. Since the 1970s, our federal government, it seems, has had a greater and great, has had more and more difficulty in uh, just trying to, to face the problems of immigration. And so our law, our immigration law, which had been fairly stable, has changed again and again and again. So there was that law in 1965. In uh, just 20 years later, in 1986, Congress passed another reform law. This was called the Immigration Reform and Control Act, which for the first time, uh, this law emphasized both enforcement of our laws, but also amnesty, uh, wh which means that people who were here in our country illegally, our government basically says, you know what, it's, it's just too hard to try to work all of this out and get it all legal we're just going to wipe the slate clean and start again. So that was 1986. Four years later, in 1990, Congress passed another immigration law, the 1990 Immigration Act, uh, which now increased the number, uh, the level of immigration that would be allowed. Uh, and in fact, it increased visas by 40%. That's a huge jump, you know, in, in one time. It also established uh, what was called the Jordan Commission. You remember Barbara Jordan, a um, black woman who was involved in national government at that time. So this commission is named after her, established the Jordan Commission to do a deeper study of immigration. You know, it se seemed to be getting out of control. What should we do to, you know, to, to deal with this better? And this commission uh, worked from 1990 to 1997. But even before they finished their study in 1996, Congress passed another immigration law. This one is called the Illegal Immigrant Reform and Immigrant Responsibility Act. Now this law of 1996 uh, mandated that there should be more uh, border patrol and it um, gave money for more INS, in, uh, the Immigration and Nationalization Service, more INS agents. So there was a great emphasis now on enforcement of our immigration laws. Um, it also established that uh, repercussions for entering the country illegally would be increased and uh, interestingly, a border fence, now this is the national government, a border fence was planned for San Diego and under this same law, it allowed, and this was new, this had never happened before, it allowed state police officers to enforce immigration 
laws. Before this time, it, you had to be a federal agent because it was a federal law and only federal agents could enforce it. But now with this one, it's, it's very heavy on the enforcement side. And they said, no, even state officers could enforce immigration laws. Uh, this laws uh, come under very heavy criticism uh, from groups and including the United States bishops to, to some extent for groups who want to work for further comprehensive uh, immigration reform. So we had, there was the major reform of 1965, then this new wave of immigration beginning in the 70s, and then this series of new acts, one in 1986, another one in 1990, another one in 1996, and in addition to this, during the period of the 1990s, there were four other amnesty bills passed which pardoned um, illegal aliens. And, and the way I look at this is, uh, it seems to me it's basically our government, the federal government, just saying this is, it's, it's beyond our control. You know, we just can't deal with it. And so we'll just say, okay, you're here. Okay, we're going to start again, you know, and, and try to, to regulate this better. But four times during the 1990s, there were amnesty bills passed. That pretty much brings us up almost to the present time. The next major incident, of course, is the uh, terrorist attacks on our country uh, in 2001. And this, among other things, you know, this made people here say, look, we really have to know who's in our country, uh, especially if, uh, like some of the terrorists were, if they happen to be here illegally. We, we have to be able to track this. So that was 2001. In 2002, then, there was a reorganization of uh, immigration enforcement at the federal level. Uh, there was established the Department of Homeland Security, DHS, uh, that didn't exist before, and immigration was put underneath that. And the name was changed, so it's no longer the INS, the Immigration and Nationalization Service, that doesn't exist anymore. Now we've got ICE, the ICE, which is the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency. So that's 2002. And now we're on our side of the uh, terrorist attacks. In 2004, in, actually in January of 2004, President uh, Bush was just starting his second term um, and he called for a comprehensive immigration reform. Now, I mean, as you can see from this little history, I mean, there had been almost an ongoing immigration reform uh, since the 1960s. But he's asking for, uh, let's take another look at the whole picture, see what we're doing wrong, try to get it right, and come up with a new law that is going to address everything. Now, of course, he's, he's only president. You know, he can't do this on his own. So in his calling for this, he was basically uh, throwing out an invitation to Congress and say, this is what I think we should do or what we need to do. So start looking at this, you know, start working at it. And they did in 2004. And you know how it works, the House comes up with a bill and the Senate comes up with a bill and 
then they have to get together and see if they can come up with a compromise bill and then that goes to the president and may or may not be signed. So from 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, this is being worked on uh, in both houses and they finally come up with a compromise bill passes the House and now it's going to the Senate. Is it going to be passed or not? And this was in July, I think it was, I know it was in the summer, I think it was July of 2007, it failed. So after all those years, 2004, 5, 6, 7, four years of work, the bill failed. And so nothing was passed. No comprehensive immigration reform was passed. So that's 2007. Now we're already in a new electoral cycle. You know, new people coming up as candidates for their parties and the presidential race begins again. Immigration is, of course, one of the things that every, every candidate has to talk about, and they did. But as you remember, we ended up with either uh, uh, McCain or Obama. The interesting thing is that on this issue of immigration, they were not really very different. Of course, um, now we have uh, President Obama. And he supports, as did President Bush, comprehensive immigration reform. Now, I want to stop there. We'll I'll come back to just remind you what President Obama's position is. But at this point, I want to shift gears and throw in the voice of the United States Catholic bishops. Um, and this goes back, well, there were a couple things. Back in the 1950s, uh, Pope Pius XII um, gave an, an, it wasn't an encyclical, but an allocution. He gave a talk where he said, you know, as, just as a church, worldwide, as a church, we need to be pastorally concerned about the lives of migrant peoples. And he was thinking of all kinds of peoples, people who migrate for economic reasons, people who migrate uh, because they want to you know, escape political or religious oppression, but he's also thinking of people who just live as migrants, uh, the gypsies, or I'm not sure, we don't call them that now, but that's what, you know, what they were called then. And even circus people who are always on the move. You know, so basically people who aren't located in a parish, they're all over the place. And Pius XII, he said, you know, we've got to remember these people and be pastorally concerned about them. Well, just moving up, skipping over some things, but moving up to the late 1990s, uh, then Pope John Paul II visited America and after that uh, issued a decree, a, a paper on the church in America and he too raised the issue of uh, migration and immigration. Uh, so that's the very late 90s after his visit to America and just shortly after that about the year 2003 the bishops of the United States so this is the USCCB United States Conference of Catholic Bishops got together with the bishops of Mexico and together they issued a joint letter called Strangers No Longer. <clears throat> and so our bishops and the bishops of Mexico issued this letter 
calling for comprehensive immigration reform, 2003. Now, it's very interesting that just months later, in January of 2004, that's exactly what President Bush was calling for. Now, you know, we'll have to see exactly what the bishops meant by that. So, first of all, in uh, 2003, in this, this letter that they wrote with the Mexican bishops, they laid out five principles. So, in here, they're, they're basically saying, whatever law you come up with, we, you know, Congress and Senate, you know, what, whatever uh, legislation you come up with, here are the principles that we think need to be respected. Number one, five of them. Number one, persons have the right to find opportunities in their own homeland. So in other words, the situation in your home country should not require you to leave your homeland. Uh, you know, there should not be religious oppression. There should not be political repression. There should be, there should be adequate economic opportunities so that you don't have to disrupt your life and the life of your family. Okay, so that's number one. People have the right to find opportunities in their own homeland. Number two, the other side of that. People do have the right to migrate to support themselves and their families. Now, I, th I think, you know, we need to sort of remind ourselves about here. They're talking about the right to migration. We always think about it as immigration, you know, people coming into our country. But the bishops are using the, the more uh, broad term, migration. So we have to remember that there were years, there were decades, you know, of the Iron Curtain where people were not allowed to leave their own country. And the bishops are saying that's not right. You know, that people do have the right to leave their own country if they need to do this, you know, for, for their welfare and the welfare of their families. Okay, now third, the third principle, sovereign nations have the right to control their borders. So just because you have the right to migrate doesn't necessarily mean that you have the right to immigrate here today. You know, maybe, maybe next year. But even, you know, if you need to migrate now, maybe you need to go to uh, some other country where, you know, they can, they can take you easier or something like that. So they're not exactly the same. There is the right to migrate, but countries also have the right to control their borders. Number four, Refugees and asylum seekers should be afforded protection. So this now is, you know, uh, people who, you're not moving just because there's, oh, maybe you can get a, a better job or make, you know, get a, a better house or a better living. That's, that's sort of opportunity. What they're talking about here is people who have to leave because they're being persecuted. And so the, the bishops are cutting out a separate principle for that, and they're saying, look, you, you just have to make room for people who are being persecuted. Okay? So refugees and asylum seekers should be afforded protection. And then the last one, number five, the human dignity and human rights of undocumented migrants should be respected. Now, this is the, the polite term that we should use now, undocumented migrants, in other words, illegal aliens. And what they're saying is, 
here they're talking about human dignity and human rights. And it seems to me this is really a key to understanding the position of our bishops. Um, you know, our country or any country, you know, that's going to regulate its immigration, it's going to make a body of laws, and those are political laws and establish political rights and duties. But the bishops here are appealing to a deeper natural law basis for this principle where it's not just political or civil rights. They're saying that underneath those there are more foundational, more fundamental human rights based on human dignity. So those are the five principles. And then at the same time, the bishops came up with five suggestions for policy. And uh, this was also done in 2003, but this remains, I mean, I just checked again recently, so this remains the current position of the, the bishops on this. So here they're saying now at not the level of principle, but at the level of policy, this is what we would like to see. Number one, earned legalization. So what that means is if you are here in this country illegally as an undocumented person, that you should be able to work toward legal status without having to leave the country. Okay, that's what it means. So earned legalization. Number two, enforcement of laws. So, and this is from uh, the bishop's uh, own web page. So the bishops support the legitimate and important role of the United States government in enforcing immigration law at the border and in the interior. Number three, a future worker program to permit foreign-born workers to enter the country safely and legally, uh, something that would allow temporary workers to, to come and, and go to make that easier to happen so they don't uh, do it illegally. And then number four, a family-based immigration reform uh, so that families are not broken apart and separated uh, by a temporary worker program, that families should be able to remain united. And the last, oh no, I'm sorry, the two more. The next one, to address root causes. And the root cause, um, they're adopting this from Pope John Paul II, and he said the root cause for this whole mess is a poor economic development in people's home countries. Uh, and then lastly, the last policy thing, the restoration of due process rights. This is the bishop's criticism of that 1996 law. Uh, and the bishops together with other, um, some other immigration groups uh, see that, um, claim that due process rights were uh, violated. Okay, so that's the bishops and what they have to say. Uh, now I think that's the last point, and then I'll open it for questions. The last point is where does our current president, President Obama, where does he stand on this? So you go to his website and he says he has a plan for immigration uh, for comprehensive immigration reform. And, he's, and here are the, the points that he would like to see. Number one, create secure borders. So it says, and these are real short. It says, Obama and Biden want to preserve the integrity of our borders. He supports additional personnel, infrastructure, and technology on the border and at our ports of entry. Number two, 
improve our immigration system. That's what everybody wants to do. Um, Obama and Biden believe we must fix the dysfunctional immigration bureaucracy and increase the number, number of uh, legal immigrants to keep families together and meet the demand for jobs that employers cannot fill. Number three, remove incentives to enter illegally. Obama and Biden will remove incentives to enter the country illegally by cracking down on employers who hire undocumented immigrants. Number four, bring people out of the shadows. This is just a little side comment on this. Um, I can't find the source for that phrase, bring people, or people out of the shadows. But it's used by um, President Obama. It was used by President Bush. It was also used by the United States bishops. Uh, and this means basically, you know, the people who are here in this country illegally have to live in the shadows now. Bring them out of the shadows, so give them, somehow, give them legal status. Um, I'd love to know where that phrase originally came from, but everybody's using it now. So to bring people out of the shadows. And then lastly, to work with Mexico. Obama and Biden believe we need to do more to promote economic development in Mexico to decrease illegal immigration. So where we stand now, uh, it, it seems to me, is we've got our former president, Bush, uh, our presidential candidate who lost the election, John McCain, who was, who was a great supporter, you remember, of Bush's uh, plan for comprehensive uh, immigration reform. Uh, we've got our present president, uh, Barack Obama, calling for comprehensive immigration reform. And we've got the bishops of the United States of America, together with the bishops of Mexico, calling for comprehensive immigration reform. And it seems to me that what the, the actual policies that they're calling for are pretty close together. I, I don't see wide disagreements between President Bush, President Obama, and the United States Catholic bishops. But where are we right now? Nowhere. We're, we have the old 1996 laws, which a lot of people don't like, and right now, it seems everybody is concerned about our economy. And since the failure of this last proposal in July of 2007, there doesn't seem to have been uh, new energy or any specific new initiatives to follow through on this comprehensive reform that everybody says they want. So I'll stop there.